Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com My name is Jason Newland This is Let Me Bore You to Sleep I've got no idea what number it is I think it's 95 or something like that I'm sitting back. I'm not. I'm not really sitting back in my big black squeaky chair. Not like uh, all the way back. But part of the way back. So that my legs are straight, or the leg, the leg section is kind of straight. So my legs are up. But the backrest is still up. Kind of. Not all the way up. But part of the way up. Just in case you are getting fed up with this chair squeaking all the time. What was I going to say? Oh yeah, if only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes. And only watch this video if you're watching the video on YouTube or any other place where videos are. There, I don't know where my videos might be embedded, because I know some websites embed my web my videos into their websites. Uh, so please only watch the videos when you can safely close your eyes, and please subscribe. I'd be really, really happy. It sounds so insincere, doesn't it? I'll be really happy if you subscribe. Thank you. Doesn't sound very... Yeah. Not so genuine. But I do mean it. I genuinely really, really mean it. <laughs> I really, really, really genuinely care. Really care. Yeah. Really do. Now see, it doesn't sound... But I do, I do, I really do. So, just to say thank you. <sighs> to whoever invented yawns. I need to find... Oh, I just... I need to find somewhere soundproof so that I can do these recordings and there's no background sound and I don't have to be concerned about being really quiet because the only way to avoid background sounds is to make these recordings in the middle of the night but then I have to be quiet because I don't want to disturb the neighbours uh, it's kind of just, just the way it is at the moment so I'm making some new changes so hopefully the weekend at the weekend I'm going to start I want to start doing some designs designing uh, I don't know just making some nice designs for the video covers and for the I don't know the MP you know the the recording sessions make a a special design for each one maybe just something a bit unique it's something that I've designed myself you know 
and I do do that to a degree, you know, with the videos and stuff, but I just want to do something a bit more. Yeah, a bit more. I want to put a bit more effort in on that side of things. The visual design inside, which is something that I don't really know much about, but I'm hoping to be introducing more of in the coming weeks. I mean, for me, it's all about the overall thing because I have to do everything. Uh, when it comes to this free service that I offer you know making the videos making the audios promoting it editing just you know that every single aspect of the whole thing is done by me apart from you know I don't I don't run YouTube so I don't you know but I do uh, have to upload to YouTube and I don't have to, but I choose to. And that's growing. Not not YouTube, but my channel. It's growing it's very slowly, but it's still... It's getting there, eventually. I do hope that by the end of the year I've got a thousand subscribers. Because it's... It's very... It seems at the moment, my, you know, the difference between the videos and the podcasts, it's very top heavy at the moment with the podcasts. So let's say I'm getting, uh, like yesterday, over 1,500 downloads on my podcasts and the videos I've probably got. I don't know, not many plays, not a huge amount. So it's it's just a tiny percentage of what, you know, the videos compared to the podcasts. And in the past, it used to be the other way around. It used to be all about the videos and less about the podcasts. I don't know. So, I've been working on the on the website and trying to get the just everything up to date, and it's just taking forever. It really is just non-stop. Some of it is. <laughs> I know this is a boring recording, but seriously, some of the stuff that is needed to be done by me is so tedious. It's really, really tedious. I kind of prefer just to... If all I had to do was make a recording and click a, a button and everything else was done, I didn't have to do anything else, and then I could just do another recording. I could do, I don't know, like six, seven, eight, ten a day sometimes. But because there's so much stuff to do once the recording's made, it's just so time consuming. Plus yesterday I was in bed all day. I'm talking, I got up, had my breakfast, then went to bed, got up, and then went to bed again until about eight o'clock in the evening. So I really had a Asleep, I don't really know why. Just, but I felt so much better at eight when I got up. I really felt that I'd, 
I don't know, got the correct amount of sleep, I guess. I suppose it's just sometimes when just we need to sleep. Perhaps need a little bit more than average for your particular circumstances, you know. How it is sometimes. So today is Valentine's Day. Yay. It can be a it can be a weird day for some people. I I'll probably forget about it once I've gone to bed and you know, I'll just unless I watch something on telly or something on the radio reminds me about the Valentine's ness of this period of the month I'll probably forget I haven't received any well it's still time I suppose but I, I haven't received any Valentine's cards but the postman won't deliver probably well, till daytime because it's only about half past four in the morning at the moment so he I don't know what time he delivers afternoon time maybe so you never know I might wake up to a big bunch of Valentine's cards full of money <laughs> Uh, that'll be nice so yeah it was, uh, I've talked about Valentine's in the past so perhaps I won't I won't bore you with trying to remember oh yeah oh I remember once I bought a Valentine's present for somebody. Get this for a, a weird thing. So, in 2000, there was a thing. Some people on mobile phones could ring it up. And it was, it was kind of like a precursor to, um, shall we say... Plenty of fish, you know, some kind of dating site, or maybe Tinder. I don't know. Oh, here's a funny thing. There was this a female that I'd met, got on really well with her. Hadn't seen her for a couple of months, and I saw her profile on Tinder. So what I did is I sent her a message on Facebook I didn't contact her on Tinder but I sent her a message on Facebook because I figured because of her profile on Tinder she was looking to hook up with people but I actually liked her so I thought oh perhaps we could go out for a date so I asked her out if she wanted to go out for a coffee and she said no thanks And you know, it was a weird situation because I wanted to reply and say, but you are available. You're looking for complete strangers to meet up with you. And, but obviously I couldn't do that. But there was, there was a part of me thinking, no, you, you're not allowed to reject me. You're but you're not even fussy. How can, how can, how can, how can, there's no logic to my thinking then. But you're not fussy, so how can you reject me? And, but, yeah, 
I've not seen her since. I don't know if she's still on Tinder. Because I, I couldn't really work it out. Because that's when I started getting confused. I said, is it, is it a, a hookup site? Is it a romance site? Because when I've been off, I've been on there and I've had messages. One one woman wanted to just meet up with me, and I'll be honest. I worry about anybody, any female that wants to meet up with me. I automatically get a little bit nervous about. I just, you know, I kind of like, oh, what's going on here? This doesn't seem right. And also, she'd seen a picture of me. And she still wanted to meet up with me. So that just seemed... You know, alarm bells were ringing a little bit with that. And so I just... Uh, I said, uh, I didn't actually say it. Nah, nah, nah. Yeah. It's hard to spell. It's a hard word to spell. Nah. It's more of a feeling, isn't it? It's an emotion. I did go on a date on Plenty of Fish. So I've been on Plenty of Fish a few times. When Plenty of Fish started, you could search for anybody of any age, you know, adults, obviously, and it's, it was just uh, quite a... It's quite a nice environment, actually. It's just... And then they change things. And they... They made it so that you could only contact people and look at profiles of people pretty much within the same age group. Around the same age. And that's fine if you want to meet someone the same age. But it seemed a bit uh, forceful of them, you know. It's like, well, it shouldn't matter, should it really? It's about if people like each other or not. So I put a picture of me on there. And uh, so base when I was... So this would be about 2012. So what will be 2019 now? So that's what, eight years ago? No, seven years ago. So I'm, yeah, so I'd have been 41. I was about 41 at the time. And pretty much all of the females that contacted me were in their 50s plus and which is fine it's, it's, it's not like a, a major thing um, I did cry a little bit but it's it just wasn't what it's <sighs> I don't know, it's it's kind of like I don't care what someone looks like in any other situation other than when I'm romantically involved. It's, you know, it's the only time I don't care what people look like. I don't care about people's weight, what colour of their hair or uh, ethnicity if, is that the right word ethnicity I, I don't care about any of that stuff I don't care about uh, language about you know accent I don't, I don't even care if you're smelly <laughs> that sounds bad but I don't get it doesn't I don't I don't care if you stink. I don't. It doesn't matter to me. 
I don't care if you walk around with, you know, a beehive on your head and not just a hairstyle, an actual beehive. It makes no difference. I'm not bothered. You can walk around dressed as a clown. I don't care. It makes no difference to me. I don't really feel very judgy towards people in that way about, about how they look, about how tall they are or how fat they are or how, you know, sticky out ears they might have. Like I've, I've got sticky out ears a bit. Just don't care. This, I don't even really notice that stuff, although I do, but I don't care about it. Unless I'm going to be getting naked with you, then I do care. If, if it's you know, if it's if it's a romantic situation, then I do. It's like I don't care what kind of cooking you do. I don't care whether you're a brilliant cook or an absolutely awful cook. Honestly, I don't care if, if everything you cook burns a hole into the plate and you know and it just falls through the table and burns a hole into the foundations of the building because the food's that bad and people's eyeballs explode whenever they even look at a, a dinner that you've cooked you know prepared, prepared or whatever I don't care as long as I don't have to eat it when I come to eat it, then I'm going to care about the food and, you know, what it's going to be like. So, dating to me is very much like um, a really, really bad cook. No. Is because I don't care about stuff, you know. I've I've got friends, female friends, and because of the kind of courses that I've done, like counselling, hypnosis courses, massage courses, I've spent a lot of time with predominantly women on those courses. It just happened to be how it was. I'm not saying that's how it always is, but that's how it was for these situations. Before you say, oh, but men are counsellors as well, yeah, but predominantly females are counsellors. It's statistically, there's more female counsellors than men, uh, therapeutic counsellors. And there are more female that do massage than men. You know, that's just the way it is. Um, so I've been in this situation you know where we're all perhaps going out to a restaurant or you know meeting up and they'll all be like oh Joanne you look really pretty today you look really pretty Oh, your hair looks lovely. It's a lovely dress. Yeah. Oh, you've got a lovely dress too, Lisa. It's a lovely dress. It's really great. Wonderful dress. Yeah, lovely dress. So I'll, I'll just be standing there or sitting, depending on whether or not I'm sitting down or standing. And sometimes I'll lean. I like to lean sometimes, especially in kitchens. You know, like kitchen units, they're quite good to lean against. And then I, I become part of the conversation. I get brought into it. Jason, don't you think Lisa's hair looks nice? Jason, don't you think Joanne look, looks lovely tonight? Doesn't she look pretty? Doesn't she look wonderful? I don't know where the, the voice comes from, but just... And I always seem to reply the same way. And it's an honest reply. 
is, I don't care how Joanne looks. I don't have to have sex with her. That can come out wrong. It can come out wrong, but it's kind of, I don't care how you look. It makes no difference to me. You're my friend. I, I, you know, I'm friends with you because of your personality. And I'm not friends with you because of the way you dress. seems like a really weird concept to grasp <laughs> but by the way those who have just started listening this is my Valentine's special edition of Let Me Bore You to Sleep so I've I don't know if this makes sense though I just like I don't care And this whole thing about telling each other how wonderful you look. Oh, you look really... Doesn't he look smart? Doesn't he... Like... I remember my sister... I'm not sure if it was... Yeah, we were... She was dressed. And I don't know, we was... We were about to go. It's either... It's either a wedding or a funeral, I forget, but... My my sister said, "So, Jason, how how, how do I look?" I was like, "I don't know. Just, what, what do you want?" Well, if you're gonna do that, it's pretty easy just to hand me a piece of paper with zero to ten, and I'll just choose a, a number, tick a number, tick a box, because. I just, but on the same side though, if if she'd have said, "Oh, how do I look?" and she had a big bogey sticking out of her nose, I would have pointed it out, like you know, said, so, "Well, you perhaps need to blow your nose and get rid of that bogey because it's scaring the neighbours." And just like, do you know, just that kind of thing, or if there's spinach in her hair. Uh, you know, just just little things like okay, well, perhaps you need to get that spinach out of your hair. And how did that Mars bar get stuck to the back of your dress? Oh yeah, it was me. I forgot. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's it's very. For me, it feels like I'm the one that's not being superficial because I'm not bothered how other people look because I'm not friends with anyone and I'm not I wouldn't I'm not even in a, a dating situation I would only date someone I was attracted to of course but it wouldn't just be about physical attraction I've been lucky enough. I've been around a long time, and oh man, I used to be a DJ, and I met. <laughs> Until you've been a DJ, it's a different world. It's a different to seeing people, how they behave, and um. I met some lovely, lovely people. I also met some not so lovely people. Like Behaviour wise, I'm sure they might have been really lovely as people, but not that evening. And it's really strange to see someone that's so physically attractive. but become so unattractive by the way they're acting or the behaviour. 
I can only talk from a female perspective or from a female because I, I don't sort of see men in that way so I don't I'm sure it's exactly the same uh, goes for men and with for women you know it's the same to see someone how they've gone from you really liking them to thinking to maybe not be quite so intrigued by them anymore because of their particular behaviour in that situation I met some nice people, but I am superficial though in some ways. Maybe not superficial, but I've got very high standards. In in some instances, I've got <laughs> in some instances I've got very high standards. But there are quite a few examples, which I will not tell you, which would very much contradict my high standards uh, statement. So yeah, I won't tell you about those situations, but I haven't always lived up to this high standards idea of myself that I seem to hold but I think we're all similar aren't we in the sense that we like certain things see I it might sound weird I like voices there's a few things I like in in a woman I like the voice. I'm very, I'm an auditory person. I don't limit myself, but I'm very, I'm visual to the perspective, perspective. You know, I'm still, I can see. Um, and I do like, I suppose when it comes to women, uh, again, I don't want to sort of, categorize someone by body parts because I don't I used to when I was a, like a teenager and uh, but I did a lot of things when I was a teenager that I don't do anymore like one of the things that I haven't done for a long time that I did when I was a teenager was mistake uh, Vicks Vapor Rub for Vaseline thinking that I'd grabbed a big chunk of Vaseline out of the jar in the bathroom the family bathroom at the age of 14 gone upstairs all you would have heard from a distance was the door closed and then a very very loud yell so yeah, well, I won't go into that, but yeah, there's a lot of things I used to do that I don't do anymore. I'd say I'm still quite childish in some ways, but more, but in some ways I was more adult than others when I was a child, I think. I've always been a kind of a thinker, not, not intelligent, not sort of I'm not an intellectual I'm not uh, uh, kind of an academic kind of person I don't use big words when they're not necessary I don't don't see the point in using what's the point in using a word that no one else uses that's not communication and there's a few DJs on on tele on the um, talk radio LBC that I listen to and occasionally they'll chuck a word out that I perhaps have never heard of before never heard that word and I've been around 48 years 
and I've done a lot of reading and heard a lot of things and I'm thinking okay so chucking out a word that other people are not necessarily going to know what it means why not just use an equivalent word that other people can understand so I'm a very basic talker very basic I don't I don't think I'll ever say a word that you can't understand ever not you but just anyone because it's just very basic <laughs> I just like basic words I don't that's what I'm not really a big fan of some of the old literature because the it seemed to be a real show off of how many different words can I use to uh, for me it can disrupt the flow of the reading but that in a sense that might show my lack of intelligence I don't know because reading wise I always class myself as being uh, equal pretty much to anyone else at school I could read loved reading in fact and mathematics I was very very low down I was in a remedial class in maths or it used to be called the dunce class uh, basically all they do is put you in a room with other people that were also classed as dunces and you'd have no teacher you'd just be left alone to do what you want play with toys and just you know I'm talking in high school not, not in junior school in high school and so that's how I was treated for maths just put in a room with people with other kids who I became friends with who were disruptive didn't want, didn't want to learn refused to do anything and but English I was not in the top but I was in it, you know, I was in the middle I was in the middle of the year middle of because when I was at school <laughs> when I was at school I'm trying to move on from being superficial oh it's just like all the other superficial men we thought he might have been a bit more nicer a bit more nicer than that now all he cares about is his tits and bums tits and no that's not all I care about I care about eyes as well and I like cute little noses I just, I just it's not about superficial all he cares about is the face the face tits and bums in the face no it's a it's more it's it's about so much more than that because it's so I think if you're in a room with somebody the sm the smell oh he likes smelly people now that's all he cares about is smelly people no no it's not about smelly people we've all got a smell we've all got to smell we've all, we all smell of something you know um, I don't mean if you don't shower or bathe I'm talking about just the smell we, and there's these invisible um, smells are we talking about silent farts now no invisible smells of is it endorphins or you know so you're in a room with someone and there's an attraction going on you're not even aware of it you don't consciously understand what the attraction is oh, he's calling a stick now we don't understand don't understand anything do we don't understand what the attraction is I know what I like just like you said you know what you like now you said you don't know what you like make your mind up Tits and ass, that's all it is. Tits. Boobies, 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 Mr. Booby Man. No, 
What I'm saying is, oh, you like people smell, smelly people, smell, smell. No, no, stop it. There's the invisible stuff. Even as, it can be as subliminal as I could smoke uh, Marlboro cigarettes, for example, and you're, you know, and I might meet a woman and her father or grandfather or some man, man that was very close to her, perhaps used to smoke Marlboro. And that smell triggers off like a, a instantly feeling warm and positive feelings towards me, but without understanding why. You know, or it could be uh, aftershave or deodorant, or uh, you know, you could. A lot of people just it could be the eye colour. It could be anything. It could remind you of someone. I mean, if you look at Rod Stewart, he's dated a lot of blonde women over the years. And he, he kind of sort of had a type, a type of woman that he liked. And he ideally wanted them to stay at the same age but they didn't so he had to keep you know uh, replacing them but oh here's something you might I was actually back in 1998 slash 99 I don't know I worked with somebody that was best friends with Rod Stewart's wife and the reason they were best friends is because they were at college together they were doing some I don't know it was a fashion course or photography course or something I don't know and uh, she was dating Rod Stewart I think she just like just met him when they met and Rach, I think I'm Rach, Rachel, her name is, the, the the lady that ended up marrying Rod. Yeah, so that's not a claim to fame because I've never met Rod Stewart and I've never met his wife. But I was friends with one of her best friends. So I'm guessing she would have been at the wedding. But it would have been a guess. And even if she wasn't, you're never going to know because I might have made it up. That's the wonder of these pointless let me bore you to sleep sessions is I can just talk about nothing for hours and hours. You just think everyone's smelly. No, I don't. I don't think that. Look, back in 2005, maybe 2006, I was working in a call centre and there was this woman working there. She was probably early 20s and... Okay, this is a bit... I don't quite know what happened, but she she was on... She was working in a call centre, she was working in sales, and at that point I was working in a different department. But I had to go into the sales department every now and then and do some stuff. And she was calling me over and she was showing me for some reason she was showing me this catalogue of uh, underwear that she was going to buy I think she might have asked me which one do I like best um, but not only that um, it kind of looked like she was already wearing it just the way she was dressed 
and I was very attracted to this to this lady but it felt more than that it felt more than just visual if that makes sense and my body reacted <laughs> that's all I'm going to say my body reacted and I quickly shuffled off downstairs and carried on with my work I didn't do anything weird so however and this never happened before she seemed to have noticed my reaction to her and decided to tell everybody that she worked with um, I'm trying to think how to describe if um uh yeah it's just it's there was there was movement. It was, I don't know how to but it stuck in a physiological movement that was out of my control and you know my hands were on my head I don't know if they were but just as an example it wasn't I wasn't kind of willing anything to uh, you know in the same way as if you were making a pepe mache elephant trunk you're not going to will it to become hard you know it's going to it does its own thing but it's, it starts off soft because it's pap papier mache and it's glue and you know paper and stuff that's kind of what I'm trying to just uh, get at um, but yeah I was kind of a bit of a laughing stock for a while there but it was just a natural reaction to being around her. And there was more to, it wasn't just like how she looked. There was like a smell. There wasn't a smell. <laughs> Sounds very, oh, he's talking about smelly people. Why is he calling her smelly? Just because she noticed something, now he's got to call her smelly. Yeah, that's not fair. No, I'm not, she wasn't smelly. She's, I'm sure she, I don't even remember her smelling of anything. I just... I don't know, maybe I liked her voice. I like voices anyway. I used to be able to connect quite well with people when I did telesales. And I did it for quite a few years. And used to talk to people on the phone and I'd get quite a few women flirting with me on the phone. Because the good thing about a phone call is when they were talking to me, I could be anything they wanted. You know, within the realm of, I'm still going to be a person sitting on a phone uh, talking to them. Uh, so it's unlikely I'm going to be an astronaut and have a part time job as a call centre worker. That would be unusual. But for them, I could be like six foot seven, blonde hair, maybe long blonde, wavy hair, smelly. So I thought I'd chuck that in. I could, you know, I could have big, long, bright red fingernails. Who knows, you know? I don't. I'm just saying it's, it could be possible. I could have nipple tassels, but I don't. Mm. No, I don't. I don't. I never. I got quite. Oh, God, I'm not talking about my nipples. I'm moving, moving on. I'm moving on. Oh, I had this. So I met up with someone on Plenty of Fish. And the reason I took interest in her is because she was the first person that contacted me 
that wasn't a pensioner. And it's, you know, it's like, okay, that's nice. Although I don't care if I meet someone that's a pensioner or it doesn't make any difference. It's just um, that would have to be someone that, you know, if I fell in love with someone that was older than me, it's because of who they are and that would be different. But I'm not going to purposely look for someone that's, you know, 90. You know, it's not, it's not in my list of to do things. It's not on my bucket list, you know. Maybe when I'm 140, I might consider a 90 year old. But, um, <laughs> I'm not, I'm oh, being prejudiced against 90 year olds now. No, I'm not. I'm not at all. I wish I hadn't mentioned it. This is the this is a Valentine's Day special. We're we'll talking about romance. And what you're talking about is boobs. No, I'm not talking about. I'm not. I haven't even mentioned that. I'm talking about romance. It's about love and consideration and caring and kindness and that's way more important. But you can get that without romance. You know, you can have love and kindness and compassion without romance the romance bit is the bit that is just that's the difference that makes the difference I don't know it's it's been so long since I met anybody that I looked forward to meeting you know and I've got I've got the a couple of friends, but I don't look forward. You know, I meet, I see them, but I don't look forward to it. It's it's not it's not like a, I know it's an old cliche, but they don't complete me. They're just friends. I don't want to. There's no one that I want to tell. Um. Yeah, I'd like to have someone that I could tell them about my life you know that I could I know that my life is pretty boring and stuff but and, uh, the things that I'm interested in other people generally don't seem to be which is why I do these recordings which is why they're so successful yeah but I just it'd be nice to have someone to talk to and someone to share things with I'd like to meet someone that I'm interested in because generally I'm um, so self-centered personally that I'm only interested in myself and the online thing that I do. It's the only thing that I really seem to care about. And I'd like to kind of grow and expand a bit so that there's something to include another person like on a really um, personal level that I can be with maybe live with marry you know perhaps or maybe live spend time with once a, once a week on a Saturday evening and one phone call I always thought actually my ideal relationship would be Saturday evening, every Saturday evening, apart from maybe boxing, a boxing Saturday. But then my ideal girlfriend would be a boxing fan. And that'd be great. And then maybe two very short phone calls during the week. Perhaps one on Tuesday one on Thursday for about 10 minutes with the option of an emergency call as you know when needed maybe one once a month by emergency I mean if needed to talk about something emotional for for no more than 12 minutes 
So yeah, that's what I was thinking. But life doesn't seem to be like that. It's you know, I'm I'm kind of I'm like a a new age dinosaur. If if that makes sense, you know, I'm kind of really I love technology. I'm not really into it, but I love it. I kind of I love the technology that fits in with what I like to do. Anything that helps me do what I want, I love all that stuff. You know, software that will help me to make videos and to uh, make better audios, podcasts, promotion. That's the stuff that I like. Anything like that. But things like texting I don't like ongoing conversations with people in a texting format if I text someone I generally have a rule a full text rule if they text me I'll text them back they'll text again and I'll text and that that text then will be the last text in, as far as I'm concerned if they text back again I might not reply because I've already ended the conversation or if it's someone important a like family it's not a good example of that if it was someone important <laughs> just kidding um, what I'll do is especially if I think this is going to drag on to like six or eight texts. I can't, you know, I like there to be an ending. So I'll phone them up and I'll say, right, you know, because it's going to be something as simple as well. Do you want to meet up for coffee? Okay, where do you want to meet? Uh, I don't know, where do you want to meet? And then they reply, well, I don't know, where do you want to meet? Oh, okay, well, we'll meet at uh, the Wimpy. So, but, yeah, but I, I'm a vegetarian. I said, yeah, but I'm not. Yeah, but I'm a vegetarian. I don't want to go somewhere where they cook meat. I said, but I'm not a vegetarian, so it doesn't affect me. Yeah, but I am a vegetarian, and I don't want to go where people, where they, you know, they cook burgers I said yeah but I like burgers I said yeah but I don't want to go there I said well where where do you want to go and you know with Texas go on and on and on and on and then what time what time do you want to go well eh, just it's easier sometimes just to phone up and say where do you want to meet there at that time all right see you later sometimes I get caught in the net I get caught in the net of conversation you know the conversational net which you know it can be timeless it could there's no time on it it's like time stops and you come out of the conversation and you've wasted an hour So what I try and do if I get caught in a conversational net with like a, it can be so innocent like, oh so how did you get on last week with that appointment? And I start to answer, say well what happened is, oh, and I stop myself, say no, no, let's not use up all our conversation on the phone, otherwise we'll have nothing to talk about when we meet. And I try and catch myself. Bye. Love you. Yeah, really. Yeah, love you. Well, you. By the way, you look really pretty. Yeah. Lovely dress. Lovely trousers. And, you know, put the phone down. Well, not put the phone down, but press the, the off button. 
some and also long conversations what's weird about it is I don't want to have long conversations but I'm so chatty that I end up having long conversations because I go for so long a period without speaking to anybody that when I do I tend to be a little bit too chatty when the fact is I don't really want to talk to anyone not I don't mind but I'm not that bothered that's why I do these recordings so I can just I want to talk at people I don't want to talk with them I don't want to answer questions I just want to just blurt out whatever's in my mind about whatever I'm thinking about and then move on with my life I'm probably not a very good boyfriend material, perhaps. I'm not even a generous lover. I just, <laughs> just thought I'd chuck that in. No, I don't really even care about that stuff anymore. There was a time when I did. I was like, oh, I've got, I'm, I want to do myself to please to please the white person I'm with and give them as much pleasure as possible but now I just it's a different attitude I just want to get it done as quick as possible and I can carry on watching television ideally get it done during the adverts that's why yeah I'm not such a fan of watching uh, BBC there's no adverts on BBC there's less time for romance but then if you're watching if you're streaming stuff like Netflix you can just pause so yeah so this has been a dedication to Valentine's all you Valentines out there, all you people that have been, you know, received flowers and cards and chocolates and stuff. And I was going to tell you a story about someone I bought a Valentine's gift for. Uh, I'll tell you quickly. It's I. I assume everyone's asleep by now, so I'll tell the story. So is this? I met this woman. I'd not met her, but I met her on a TV thing, uh, a telephone line thing. It was like a, a dating site, but before the internet. Well, it wasn't before the internet, but it was before the dating sites on the internet. And it was a, a telephone version. And it cost like a penny a minute to phone up and you'd hear, you'd leave a voicemail and you'd hear other people's voicemails and you'd respond to it if you liked the sound of them. And they'd get back to you and you'd be on there for hours, you know. Well, I met quite a few women from that. But there was one particular one I really got on with. And I bought a Valentine's gift. It's like a brooch or... a little hammer, I don't know, it was something. It was nice. And she kept not answering the door. I found out where she lived and I didn't find out. I didn't, you know, didn't follow her from work. Um, she, you know, she told me where she lived. And I used to send her letters. She sent me letters and stuff. And uh, I can't remember ever buying anyone else a Valentine's gift. never seemed to have a girlfriend at the time I have bought girlfriend you know, um, the Valentine's cards for people that I liked but it's never been it's never gone anywhere there was this uh, woman I don't want to I don't want the right words, I'm not going to say her name. So there's a person that I really, really 
really really liked I'm talking as much as you can like someone without knowing them so I didn't like her personality because I didn't know her personality so it was in some ways superficial but I just couldn't believe she was just whenever I was near her I had this these feelings and um, of love you know love real strong emotions but yeah nothing came of it I never got a chance to really tell her how I felt so yeah I might meet someone one day I don't know how do you meet someone when you never go out it's uh it's like therapy isn't it please help me uh dear dear Jason uh I don't go out very often so I was wondering how would I meet somebody somebody new the thing is it's quite good because then I can I can kind of fool myself into believing that that's the only reason that I'm single not the fact that uh, I'm probably a good two stone overweight or possibly more you know it's uh, and even my hairline at the front of my hair because my hair's growing back now because it was I shaved it off a few months back in December I think so now my hair's growing back and the front of it is receding there's like these the hair's basically like little islands you have to swim across to get to the next hair follicle it's ridiculous and it's hard to get an idea by looking in the mirror how I look because I don't look at myself I don't find myself irresistible I mean I understand why people would but I don't see myself as a a sexual being like as a as a possible partner for myself because that would just be strange although technically I have been my own partner for quite a while so I just I don't know just I'm not sure how I've aged I don't know if I'm doing okay or not there's a few bits I could have done to make myself look a bit younger and maybe a few like things I could have done to my skin to make myself a bit bit nicer but I do use moisturiser and I kind of try and keep my my, my face clean um, God this is this is this is probably the most boring thing that I've ever said ever seriously this is really this this is beyond boring I can't believe if you're still awake you really should have fallen asleep by now Oh man, I'm talking about washing my face. That's just so tediously boring. (laughs) But I would like to meet someone one day. But I know it means going out and there's this whole thing about, oh, there's always someone out there for someone. Everyone's got someone out there for them. But what if that person lives in Brazil? or China or Australia or America or you know some somewhere long way away so my soulmate is supposed to be someone that lives in Colchester Essex or someone that I only will ever meet if on the way to the garage on the way to Iceland to buy some 
tea cakes. So yeah, it's uh, so that's it. Happy Valentine's. And this was the Valentine's special for two thousand and nineteen. And I'm going to go now because I've wasted enough of my own time. So I'll see you tomorrow.